What's up guys, Nate here. I have something very special for you today. I'm going to be showing you my complete, 100% complete Bandai Cardass Pokemon set. This set was released in 1996 back in Japan. It was sold as sets of five cards or you could buy single cards, I think for 100 or 20 yen. But basically these cards are well known in the hobby for their artwork, their very unique artwork. I mean, some of the top artwork, I would say. Um, a lot of the artwork on here are the Pokemon using a signature move that they're known for. So this might be Leech Seed. Um, as you can see, it says Pocket Monsters on the back. And it just kind of gives you a little information about how the Pokemon levels up and all the Pokemon included in the family. So this is some really cool stuff, guys. I love stuff like this, and you will not beat this artwork of this set. This is some of the coolest artwork of all time. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, there are two other cards that were released about six months after the initial release of this set that were more so uh, promotional items. I do not have those cards, so however... However bad you want the set, you might want to go for like a complete master set, in which case you might want to go after those cards. A lot of mine are kind of in semi-light played condition. This Bulbasaur might actually be one of the worst cards in the set. So there you have it. Yeah, I'm going to go through and show you every single front and back of this set. So this might be a little longer of a video. Now, these hollow cards here are actually really cool. They are actually stickers. So if you take this out, you can actually peel off the hollow foil layer on top and use it as a sticker. So that's really cool. However, if you do that, uh, probably not worth very much. A lot of people like the artwork how it is, obviously. And as card collectors, you don't want that as a sticker. You want the actual card intact. So. One thing unique a little bit about this Charmander is uh, they still had the horn on the back. Charmander nowadays does not have that. So this is a lot of really early artwork, guys, that you just don't really see anymore. But you do have the classic, you know, white faded artwork here. Unique Sugimori artwork. And I really do love the Charizard here. Just the pose on a lot of these is just so awesome. Now you can actually tell on this one. This one has a little side layer here of the Charizard. So you can kind of tell that one is a sticker. So there's that. We have the Squirtle. Really awesome cards, guys. I mean, just having these cards, they are a little thinner than normal cards. Um, here I have another card off to the side. So you can see the size comparison to these guys. They're slightly smaller, um, slightly thinner, and especially the uh, hollow cards, they are really thin because they are in fact stickers. So they just have like a normal backing, but the front of the card is not as much. So there's a cool blast boys. We have Caterpie using String Shot. Just so cool. Metapod using Harden. That might be why you see him as like the gray off color. It's really cool that it kind of shows stats here too. They have a green version, tells you where to find them. Here we have the Butterfree. Looking a little sad. No data on green version. Here we have Weedle. There we have it. So as you notice on the evolutions that have no data, that's because you have to kind of evolve them. But these cards were good because it told people like the Pokemon in the family, told you the likelihood of red version, blue version, green version. So just overall classic, classic cards. You almost have a game guide on the back of each card telling you where to catch them. So that is really cool. 
And here we have a Beedrill shooting its stinger. Really cool there. Have the Pidgey. Probably trying to use Gust the best way it can. Pidgeotto. Always loved Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. Now this one is one of the more lackluster artworks for Pidgeot. I mean, you can't really tell that this is a full-blown Pidgeot. You know, to me, Pidgeotto and Pidgeot were always kind of hard to tell apart early on. I think a lot of people struggled with that as kids, but Pidgeot just looks like, I don't know, it looks like a Pidgey almost in this picture, so that's kind of a weird one. I think it was because Ash always had Pidgeotto. He had Pidgeotto for the longest time, so everyone thought that was like the coolest, you know, but there was Pidgeot. Pidgeot didn't get as much love as Pidgeotto. Kind of a plain looking eradicate. Another theme that you'll find in this set, which is pretty hilarious, some Pokemon just kind of get beat up throughout the set. Uh, you know, you have your classic Psyduck who always is struggling through life, you know. You have Ditto for some reason. Ditto is always getting uh, the short end of the stick on this set. Um, there is only one Ditto card, but he shows up in multiple cards. And uh, that's what's really weird about this set. They have a lot of Pokemon that show up in other cards. You can see the Arbok right there. And of course, Arbok is next. Kind of using, uh, I don't know, what maybe Sludge or some type of poison attack on poor Diglett there. But it was really the interesting choice of using multiple Pokemon across multiple cards that really sets this set apart once again. Here we have Pikachu, really cool artwork there. Love that artwork. We have Raichu, not sure what attack he's using there. If you guys know that attack, let me know below. It doesn't quite come to mind at this moment. I have Insane Attack for Saiyan True. Kind of fits him perfectly, right? I have Slaying, Saiyan Slash, rather. I almost said Slaying Slash. Then we get into the Nitto King, Nitto Queen line here. Here we have Voltor getting the short end of the stick. Uh, I don't know about Nidorina, but that doesn't look like a good idea, sticking a Voltorb in your mouth. So Nidor Queen, interesting little poison barbs coming off of it. Nidoran Boy. Nidorino. And of course we have Nitto King. Here we have Clefairy. Now this was a hollow, it was an interesting choice, but if you remember back in the day, they almost had Clefairy be one of the starters. So that's kind of some interesting information that I might actually do a video on later on. Um, Clefairy could have been a starter. Could you imagine like Pikachu being, you know, just a random Pokemon and Clefairy being the face of the franchise? Although at this point, you can probably argue that Charizard is the face of the franchise as much as that's selling. We have Ninetales. Really cool there. We have... Jigglypuff with the music notes. So it's probably singing, putting everybody to sleep. And look at this next artwork, guys. <laughs> if you didn't notice, the next artwork or for the evolution is right there. And it's literally the same artwork. So yeah, Wigglytuff. Uh, poor Psyduck is just kind of confused. So we have one strike against Diglett. Uh, we have one strike, what was it, against... Uh, Diglett, Psyduck, and Voltorb, I guess. But I think Voltorb had the upper hand against Nidorina. If he just gives him a little shock. But we're going to kind of keep a tally to see what Pokemon just got the short end of the stick on this set. 
Here's the Oddish. If you guys are sticking around through this whole video, thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe if you like some more videos like this. If it's like a special set like this, I don't really care to make the video super informative or super entertaining. I just like to sit down and go through these sometimes. This is one of those occasions where, you know, I just had to sit down and really soak in this set right now. So there we have a Weedle. And another Psyduck. So Psyduck's winning. That's two Psyducks in a row that have just kind of been thrown on to make fun of. So Psyduck is the winner right now as far as the short end of the stick. We have been on that, been a moth. This one always looked weird to me. Reminds me of Weevil from Yu-Gi-Oh! with some glasses or something. As you can see, uh, we're not even halfway through the stack so yeah this is gonna be a long video guys thanks for sticking with me if you're still here but no worries we'll just get through it just soak in some nice artwork I like how this one's a little fuzzy because they might be using like earthquake or something have Meowth might be using payday or something got Persian Using Scratch or like Furry Swipes. Now we have the Psyduck actually. His own card looking cool doing like a swipe. He's pissed off because of all these other cards kind of dunking on him. So we'll see if he makes a comeback. Golduck. I want to say there's a lot of cards that kind of throw Ditto under the bus. So we might see a, uh, a run of Ditto. Here we have Growlithe spitting some embers out. These artworks are just so cool, guys. Now, what's interesting about this Growlithe card, look, I don't know if they didn't have the design finalized for the Arcanine or if they were using something else, but they actually had him blacked out. And as you can see here, the Arcanine card does not look like the silhouette over there. So this is a little rare card here and then of course it is fixed right there we have a polywag polywhirl polywrath looking like he's using double slap that's actually the same hand maybe he's just going so fast you can't see it now we have Abra. This one's really cool. He's using Teleport, and uh, he's actually disappearing off of the card right there. Really cool artwork. We have Kadabra. Kind of putting a smack down on Poliwag. So Poliwag has a strike against him. So two Psyducks, and everyone else who's shown up's only got kind of one strike against him. We have Machop. Machoke. And of course, Machamp. Instead of seeing Machamp punching, we're actually seeing him kick something there. And we have Bellsprout. Uh, weeping Bell, Weeping Poison. It's really cool. You very rarely see a cool Weeping Bell card, but there you have it. Leave it up to this set. Victory Bell, another card that just does not have very cool artwork uh, in a lot of cards, but look at him there. Actually looks really cool there. He's like spinning. Here we have Tentacle. It's hard to make a Tentacle look cool, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. And here we have Electrode, another like water situation. You know, we had Nid Arena in her mouth and then we, we have a tentacruel using uh some attack on electrode so not the brightest move there tentacruel here we have geodude found everywhere in all three versions apparently 
We have Graveler. Really cool card. Now this is interesting in itself. This is Golem actually using like self-destruct. He is actually blown to pieces and you can literally see through his body right there. His entire body is exploding. And we're gonna see that on another card. So that is really cool in itself. We have Ponyta. You never really see the flame that long on Ponyta. So once again, another unique artwork. We have Rabidash. Now that is the back leg. I know what you guys are thinking. We have Slowpoke. Maybe the maybe the one artwork where it's uh, questionable, and maybe that one shouldn't have made it past uh, the screening. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. We have Slowpoke. We have Slow Bro being confused, bro. Get a nice shot of his tail. And we have Magnemite, one of the coolest cards in here. Look at this Magnemite artwork. How do you make like almost an inanimate object looking Pokemon into a cool looking card? Now, that is probably as close as you can get to making it look cool. Here we have Magneton, does not look as cool as Magnemite, but still pretty solid. That Magnemite artwork just pops. Here we have Farfetch. We are finally halfway through here, um, but we are not going to be slowing down or speeding up. We're just going to kind of keep it at a nice pace here. Farfetch'd, looking chill. No evolution until Sword and Shield, however. Here we have Doduo. Got their necks in a tangle. So that's always funny there. And we have Dodrio. Got two of the three heads on the same page, at least. We have Seal taking a little nap. Just kind of lounging around. Here we have the first Ditto sighting. We have Ditto just getting frozen by a Dugong Ice Beam here. So that is one strike on the Ditto. We'll actually... Keep track of that. I think Ditto overtakes Psyduck as far as Pokemon who's always getting crapped on. So here we have a Grimer and a Muck. Really cool looking shelter. And Cloyster shooting off some of its barbs there. Now we have some really cool cards. We have the Ghastly Evolution line. Got a nice Ghastly. Haunters looking awesome. And of course, Gengar. Now look at this artwork. This is one of the coolest cards in the set. You have Snorlax who's always sleeping, thinking about food. So why not have Gengar use Dream Eater on him? It's so cool. Gengar's using Dream Eater, and he's eating a dream that is actually food that he can eat. So this is a really cool thought process going into this card. And of course, it's Snorlax who's dreaming of that chicken or whatever that is. Here we have an Onyx. Really cool looking Onyx. Did anyone else think Geodude evolved into Onyx back in the day? I think a lot of people thought that because of Brock. He had the Geodude and Onyx back in the day in Pokemon Red and Blue. Here we have Hypno. Trying to stay away from the glare on a lot of these, but. All right, we have a tie between Psyduck and Ditto. Here's Ditto getting stretched by Krabby. Krabby's looking pretty pissed there. Uh, so yeah, there is another one for Ditto. But Ditto has taken the lead. Just the very next card. I don't know why, but Crabs do not like Ditto. He's getting the Crab Hammer right here. So that is three cards that kind of throw Ditto under the bus. Here we have a Voltorb using Barrier. I think we might even see some more cards with that. So that's pretty interesting. Here we have Electrode actually using Self-Destruct just like Golem was back then. 
Now that's really cool. You never see that. Like you never in the future of Pokemon have seen this. Like they did not really either know this going forward or didn't really have, you know, solid designs or really know how the moves work. They were just kind of going with it. And a lot of it was kind of interpretation. But from this point going forward, as far as I know, there was never a shot or an official artwork of Electrode actually split in two, much less like a golem split in like 20 pieces. So that's really interesting in itself. Here we have Execute. Kind of an odd looking card there for an Execute artwork. Oh, here we have Strike 2 for Diglett. We have Executor stepping on some Diglett straight up, squishing him, squishing their face in. Then we have Cubone. Other looking Cubone card, yawning. I wish there was some secret to whether or not this went into the Kangaskhan theory, but we do not. It just shows Marowak as the evolution. And speaking of Marowak, looks like he's about to whack somebody with his club. Probably what he does best. Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan coming up. Of course, they're going to be kicking and punching. Have Lickitung going at it with a weeping bell. Hopefully it's not the one that was vomiting poison earlier. Oh, here we have another card. I forgot about this one. We have a coughing using self-destruct, it looks like. So yeah, the inside of the coughing. It's like one of those chocolate balls that is just like a shell. And there's something on the inside. You can literally just break open a coughing. And that's what his organs look like. Non-existent with explosions coming from them. Must be the bad gas. Here we have wheezing. Kind of in the smog. Rhyhorn and Rhydon. This guy looks so cool. It's almost like he's on fire. Like almost like flamed up. Man, this video is going to be like 20 minutes long, guys. But hey, sorry not sorry. This set deserves all the time we're taking on it. Here we have another Psyduck, so that might actually be tied with Ditto. But he doesn't look like he's in too much distress here. Looks like Tangela is just trying to get a little touchy-feely on him. But he does not look like he's having a good time. So, hey, someone uh, get some help there. Here we have Kangaskhan with the normal baby in the pouch. No evolution. Kind of getting into the last home stretch here, guys. We'll kind of go through a little faster, maybe, just to not make this video super insanely long. Got the star you shooting stars. The star me. And this is one of my favorite cards of the whole set. The Mr. Mime is actually using Barrier, going at it with a War Turtle of all Pokemon. It's a little really cool card. I love how the artwork in itself, too, is kind of coming off the page. There's not a whole lot of Pokemon that really overlap like that. Scyther is an interesting hollow card here. And see a lot of the stickers kind of have the edge showing on the back too. Here we have the old school Jinx. Kind of blowing us some kisses. The Electabuzz, who believe it or not, actually used to be one of my favorite Pokemon back in the day. I don't know why, but I always loved him. Magmar. We're down to our last 25 cards now. Got Pinsir. This is kind of a weird one. You never really thought of the Pinsirs really coming down and crossing over, but it makes sense, right? Tauros. Oh, there's Psyduck again. 
So I think Psyduck for sure has taken the lead. Poor Psyduck. Then we have a Magikarp. Gonna kind of show these off to the right side because the stack here is getting pretty big once we get here to the end. Now we have Gyarados. Gyarados is in fact a hollow card. One of the coolest Gyarados artworks ever. It looks like he's just kind of spiraling and kind of turning. He doesn't look all that mad like he usually does, but definitely not happy, I would say. He's attacking something, but really cool artwork there. Then we have Lapras. I don't know if you notice on these two, the background is just like a little digitized version of like, I don't know, the card blown up or something. Here we have one of the coolest cards of all time, just in general, this set or not. It is the actual Ditto. Now we did see Ditto get beat up a lot, but this is so cool. You can see Ditto kind of scratching his head, confused. He doesn't know if he wants to turn into Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle. This is a super classic card. You will not see artwork like this anywhere else. It only happens here in the Bandai card asset. I'm going to have in the description below a link to the information on this set if you want more. It's really cool to check out. Of course, we have Eevee, who is a holo card, holo sticker. Really nice there. The Eeveelutions were not holo. I think my favorite might be Flareon, which you can see coming up here right now. Almost like a flamethrower or will-o'-wisp or some type of move like that. Here we have Porygon. Porygon was another one of my favorites back in the day. This artwork, he's just kind of playing around in a little prism. I don't know if he's using like Tri-Attack or something like that, but really cool artwork there. The home stretch, guys, home stretch. Have all the fossil Pokemon coming up. Omnistar was a hollow, in fact, a nice looking hollow. Got Kabuto. Kind of hard to make Kabuto look cool. You figure maybe they would use a different move. Maybe he's using Harden there, but. Kabutops, another hollow. I don't know if they made these hollow because you can get them in the games with the fossils and they're meant to be like prehistoric Pokemon and they were meant to be kind of rare or like, you know, really based around the game. Because we do have Aerodactyl, who is also a hollow. No evolution, no data. We have Snorlax. Really interesting that they had Snorlax running here. This is the only time you will see Snorlax running. Maybe he's chasing down that Gengar to try to get that snack back. He woke up from his nap, not happy. Now we're into the Legendary Birds. Really beautiful cards here, guys. Love the Legendary Birds and the artwork on these guys. Pretty spectacular there. Got Moltres. And we have Dratini. Squeezing the life out of Charmander. Now this next card is another one of my favorite artworks. Look at this Dragonair. I've always had a love for Dragonair over Dratini and almost over Dragonite, just as far as the looks. Dragonite's cool, but he can be kind of derpy looking sometimes, if you know what I mean. But this artwork for Dragonair is so cool. I don't know if he's using like Dragon Rage or Dragon Dance or something, but man, that is awesome. Then we have Dragonite. This is a horned version of Dragonite. Dragonite kind of comes with or without the horn back in the day. Nowadays, more so leaning towards no horn. But yeah, it's kind of interesting to see him using his antennas as a form of attack there. 
never really see that anywhere else, as with a lot of these cards. Now, moving into the last two cards, you might know what they are already since there's two of them, but we have Mewtwo, really cool hollow. And of course we have Mew, because we did have all 151 Pokemon. And it was really interesting to me to know that they made a Mew card. This card I'm actually going to take out because this one's a little different. This one has a nice little texture hollow to it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has a little rainbow behind it and it's all kind of textured. So really cool looking Mew card, kind of giving us the thumbs up, knowing, yeah, I'm here, but you can't find me in the games. There's no data. So, whew, long video, guys, but man, it was awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I know it was a lengthy one, but hey, you got to do what you got to do when it comes to Bandai Cardass, right? So, if you guys like this video, be sure to leave me a thumbs up like Mew, and we will see you next time. Peace!